Hey guys, welcome back for those that are coming back and for those that are new here, my name is Laura and today we're going to be talking about my top 23 reads of 2023 and I'm excited to share them with you. I know 2023 is not necessarily over but I can't see myself finding another one of these books within the next two weeks of when 2023 is coming to an end but we will see you'll have to stick around for the wrap up to see if i do find one but anyway we're gonna get into my top reads of 2023 again super excited let's jump into it i actually sorted this into genres and then i have off to the side six books that i cannot pick my favorite out of so we'll get to those at the very end but anyway let's start off with thrillers i feel like thrillers it's like a genre that I would say I really enjoy, but I haven't picked up many of them this year and I wish I would have picked up a lot more because I do really enjoy them. But anyway, let's jump into the three I have here. So the first one is What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. Now, if you saw my 2024 anticipated reads, Kate Alice Marshall does have another book coming out. So I am so excited to grab it because I really enjoyed this book. So this one is about three young girls who are playing a game in the woods. They always play this game. They always play it in the same part of the woods. One day they are playing the game and one of the girls ends up getting stabbed an exuberant amount of times. Like it's, it's so hard to even think about. But anyway, that ends up happening. The two girls get out of the woods and they end up letting someone know. So anyway, the girl that got stabbed, she ends up living and this book is about them later in life and it tells you that in the synopsis it tells you they are liars so I'm not spoiling anything there it says they are liars one of the girls ends up wanting to say something and you know there's just plot twist after plot twist in the book I do have to say I did guess one of the main plot twists but I had such a fun time reading this book I also felt like Kate Alice Marshall's writing was just so beautiful it's not often that I find myself wanting to annotate books but this one the writing was just so beautiful there were so many quotable things that I just felt like I needed to annotate so that is how I felt during this book and that is why it is on my list for the top reads of 2023 Moving on to the next thriller, I have one that I started when I first started reading and I really enjoyed this one. This one was really hit or miss for a lot of people, but it was a huge hit for me and I enjoyed it. I even remember like after reading this, I like closed the book and like sat and stared for a while and like people are like this, you know, the plot twist is so predictable, like the main plot twist and I was like not for me maybe i'm clueless that could be a good possibility too maybe i am just so clueless and that one is the silent patient by alex michaelides and in this one we have a woman named alicia and she ends up shooting her husband and she will not speak a word afterwards she will not say anything and there's a psychotherapist who gets extremely intrigued with her case and you know her not speaking so he wants to work with her to try to help her say something and try to get something out of her and the plot twist again I did not guess it. People say it's predictable. I do not think it is. I don't know. Again, I am one of the people that this was a huge hit for me. A lot of people, like I said, it's either a hit or a miss. Huge hit for me and I really, really enjoyed it. Then we have another one and I feel like this one got a lot of hype this year and I feel like it was really worth it. And this one is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney and I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I read this when it was winter. As you can see, there's a snowy backdrop here, so it was perfect. And again, I really enjoyed it. This one is about a couple who goes on like a mini vacation. The woman ends up winning this little mini vacation, mini getaway, and they end up going and things start happening and they're like wondering what's going on. And what I loved about this book so much, not only were there so many plot twists and it had it like kept you guessing the entire time, I absolutely absolutely love that but the way the chapters ended it made you want to continue reading and every single time a chapter ended I did not want to put this book down because I needed to know what happened and I love when chapters do that I love when the author keeps you wanting to read more like you as soon as the chapter ended you're like I need to know what happens I I need to know and I love that about this book again I had a really good time I did not guess the plot I guess the main plot twist in this one as well because I feel like it gets more obvious the further, well, obviously it tells you what happens the further you get into it, but I feel like it's more guessable the further you get into it. And like you, I don't know, I feel like it's easier to guess even when you don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm making sense. But anyway, I still really, really enjoyed this and I had a really great time reading it and I just couldn't put it down. So that is why this is on here. Now we're going to move into a fantasy. 
So as you guys probably saw, if you've been around here for a little while, I just started talking about books on my channel this year. So it's been, a, it's been a lot of fun and I've really enjoyed it. But one of the first series I started reading on my channel was Akatar. And I actually have my favorite book here, which made it to the top reads of 2023, but it is probably not the one you're thinking of. So if you saw my video, you probably already know, but one of my favorite books in this series is actually not one of most people's favorites and this is probably going to shock some people but my favorite book of the series was a court of silver flames i love this book the whole time i was reading akatar i wanted to know more about nesta i wanted to know her backstory i wanted to know what was going on in her mind i just wanted to know more about her and i thought this book was phenomenal again this is my favorite book of the akatar series very unpopular opinion i know everybody likes a court of mist and fury here we are. I am different. I thought this was phenomenal. I absolutely adored it. I love Nesta's story. I just love digging further into, you know, why she is the way she is. And if you look back at my videos, I talk about in the other books how I just wanted to know more about Nesta and this delivered. I had a really good time reading it. And this is the chunkiest book. And I just had, I had a phenomenal time. But anyway, I know that's an unpopular opinion, but this definitely makes the top 23. Then we have here another book that is extremely hit. You'll you'll find this out that when books are like extremely hit or miss for people, I love reading them to figure out like what side of the spectrum I'm on, if I'm really, really going to like it or if I'm really not going to like it. And actually these next two books, people either really dislike or really love. And this one is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Obviously it's in my top 23. I love this book. I thought it was phenomenal. I'll tell you what it's about. <laughs> I'm getting, getting a little too worked up here. So this book is about a girl and she is in between life and death and what ends up happening is she is in a library and she gets to pick out like alternate lives and see how her life would have played out if she were in that life instead of the one she's in currently and I thought it was such a wholesome book it was such a slice of life made you think about your own life and like made you think about regrets differently made you I don't know it just <sighs> it really makes you think about your own life and how you're living it and what if you would have made this decision and like not to have regrets and there's just so many different meanings that you can take out of this book and that's why I absolutely love it. I thought it was absolutely phenomenal. I do know it is triggering for some people so definitely look up trigger warnings before jumping into it but again this was it was such a phenomenal read and actually after reading this one I looked up other books by Matt Haig and purchased some more of his books because I just had such a good time reading this book. I love when books make you think about your own life in certain ways and that is exactly what this one did so obviously that one made my top books. And then the next book I have here, some people are probably going to be shocked, but I really, really, really enjoyed this book. That is Assistant to the Villain. I do have to say, some of you guys are probably going to be tired of hearing it. If you read the synopsis and you read the prologue and you chuckle, read the book. If you read the synopsis and you read the prologue and you do not chuckle, this is not going to be a book for you. It is so based on humor. You have to enjoy the humor to enjoy this book. And I am obviously someone who really enjoy the humor in this book. This one is about a girl named Evie and obviously she is the assistant to the villain and she ends up losing her job one day and she is in the woods strolling around and it's a funny interaction when she ends up meeting the villain and it starts off on a funny note and I really like that. But anyway, she ends up meeting the villain and she ends up getting a job offer from him and she ends up taking it because she actually has a dad at home who is sick with a mystic illness and then she has her sister who is in school so she needs to provide for her family. So she takes the job that the villain offers her becomes assistant to the villain and I really love their adventures. So the main plot in this book is that there is a traitor out there. Someone is giving the villain's information to the king and they need to figure out who this person is to stop, you know, what is going on. And ultimately there is a huge plot twist in this and I did have the plot twist ruined for me, but this is still in my top reach, which says a lot. There's also a romantic subplot in this. A lot of people don't know that. And I don't know, I consider this I consider this cozy fantasy. A lot of people wouldn't because of the, there are like graphic scenes in here. There are like some scenes in the setting that would not be considered a cozy fantasy, 
But for me, this is what I would consider a cozy fantasy. I had a good time. I was laughing. Again, everything in this I felt like I didn't take seriously because there is that humor behind everything going on. But again, I have to stress the fact that if you do not find the synopsis funny whatsoever, if you don't find the prologue funny whatsoever, it was probably just not a book for you. So again, this is another one that was hit or miss for a lot of people, but it was a huge hit for me and I really enjoyed it. This next one here, I love this. I love the scenery. I am going to have to reread it and I'm going to reread it when I have more time to go like and annotate it because it was just, it was a phenomenal read, but I feel like I just need to completely take my time with it. And it's not to say I didn't take my time with it reading it the first time, but I feel like it will hit so much harder the second time around. But anyway, this is the Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. And again, I just love this book. I felt like this book transported you into, you know, their world. I had, like I said, I had a phenomenal time. And when I think about this book, I think about being at a circus and just like using all of your senses there. So like, I could smell the circus, I could hear it, I could you just like again you just get transported into this world and that's what I absolutely love about this book I will say that there are a good deal of characters to, like to kind of keep up with and I feel like there's a lot to grasp in this book and there's just this magical element and I feel like I'm not explaining it right whatsoever but I did really really enjoy this book it is about a circus that pops up at night and it is there only for a specific number of days and like it will go away and then it will pop up somewhere else and it only opens at night and let me tell you the magic that is in this book the imagery is amazing and I, I gave this four stars but I do think this could be a five star read for me in the future when I do read it again because again I just loved everything about it I love the magic I loved being able to feel like I was there I I just adored this book but anyway there is that one as well and then we have one literary. So we have Where the Crawl Dads Sing. This is the first book I jumped into when I started reading again. And it was a five star read for me. People say that they thought the beginning of this was slow and I would have to disagree. I do feel like the beginning compared to the end is slow, but I had a phenomenal time reading this book and I would have never guessed the ending ever. I would have never ever guessed the ending and I don't tear up very much at all when reading and this made me tear up and it was such an emotional read especially at the end. I really really adored this book. This book is about a girl named Kaya I believe. Let me see. I am terrible with names. Yeah Kaya and that says a lot too because I do not remember names. This book is about a girl named Kaya and her mom ends up leaving the family and I don't want to go too much into it but she essentially ends up there like on her own like living on her own and you know she meets two boys and it's just it's one heck of a story I have to say that seeing how she does things on her own and like navigates life and it's just it's such a phenomenal story and there's like a murder investigation going on in here and uh, it's just I don't know I really really love this book if you haven't picked it up I would definitely say pick it up and give it a shot. Again, another one that was like really hit or miss for people. It was a huge hit for me. Again, tear it up. I don't tear up very much during books, but I absolutely love this one. So there is that one. And then we are getting into my romance book. So this is actually the biggest pile I have as far as my favorite reads of the year. Okay, so now moving on to the romance books. The first one I'm going to pick up here is actually a really sad one, but I really, really enjoyed this read. And this one is If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nellen. I do have to say, I do not normally enjoy books where it kind of tells you what's going to happen in the first couple of pages and then you read it up until that event happens. I normally don't like that, but I felt like it worked with this book and I did give this one a five star and it is going to be continue to be a five star read. I love this book. I love the story. I love the characters. I love Autumn and Finn. This book is told from Autumn's point of view. So Autumn and Finn are actually childhood friends they grew up together their moms are best friends and as they grow older you see them kind of drift apart but then they reconnect when they get a little bit older and 
it's just so cool to see how they drift and reconnect and how you know they still are in each other's lives even though they drifted apart it is just such a cute story and the like i said the thing that happens is just so sad and again we are getting finn's point of view very shortly here when the second book releases in the new year and i am so excited about it so that is that one the next one we have here, I am going to say, if you do want to read it, please look up Trigger Warnings. This is such an emotionally heavy book. This one is Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman. This one, holy moly, why I love this one, first of all. I love this one because I feel like Jennifer Hartman, the way she portrays how people deal with trauma and how they deal with it so differently is done so well. And... It was such a heartbreaking read. It is, there are such heavy topics in this book. This book is about Cora and Dean. Cora's sister is engaged to Dean. They are celebrating Cora's sister's birthday out at a bar. Cora ends up staying later than everybody else. Now it is, I think it's very early morning at this point and she can only think of one person to call who will actually answer their phone and be okay to pick her up and that is Dean. So, you know, like I said, Cora's sister's fiance is Dean. And Cora and Dean, although her sister is engaged to Dean, they have, you know, always shared like a little part of their lives together as in like Cora's sister has been with Dean for so long that Dean has just been around their family for so long and like Cora and Dean have this relationship where they're always kind of competing and trying to get like a leg up on each other and play pranks on each other. Anyway, Dean goes to pick up Cora and take her home. And it is like, it's kind of like a rival situation as far as like getting one leg up on each other and pranking each other. They have this like rivalry going on. So back to the story, Dean ends up going to pick up Cora. What ends up happening is on their way home, someone ends up stopping the car and Cora and Dean end up in a stranger's basement chained in the basement. And what ends up happening in this basement is just, it's brutal. It's crazy. It is something you cannot even imagine. Again, please look up trigger warnings if you are going to pick this book up. It is just so unimaginable. It is so crazy to think that people can even think that way. But anyway, they end up having to deal with this trauma and figure out how to keep going on with life and, you know, how to navigate being in the real world again. And it is just such an emotional read. And I think, again, the way she portrays trauma in this book and how both of the characters deal with the trauma so, so differently. But I think the author did such a good job of relaying the message that trauma is so different for everyone and people process it so differently and the things you get from the experience can be so different and how you handle it and how you you know express things afterwards are just so different and I think she just did a really good job with portraying how that ends up working out anyway let's get into the next book here this book was actually a five-star read for me and I don't know if I would drop it or not I don't know I, I like continue to debate it I do still think it is one of my top reads of 2023 but I don't necessarily think it will be a five star anymore anyway this one is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune now this one is about Percy and Sam and what ends up happening is Percy's family ends up buying a house on the lake and their neighbors are actually Sam Sam's brother and Sam's mom and whenever Percy goes to the lake house, she ends up spending so much time with Sam. They're inseparable. They have, you know, just this crazy bond. And I love seeing their relationship develop. Now, Sam's mother ends up passing away. It does tell you that on the back here. Yes, Sam's mother ends up, I don't want to give away spoilers. Sam's mother ends up passing away and Percy has to go back for the funeral. And obviously they see each other and, you know, they talk and I love the childhood friends to lovers and the reuniting in second chance and I love all of that but for some reason it's just not one that I think about nearly as often as I thought I would have when I finished the book so that is why I would bring this down a little bit but I do still think this is an amazing read I do recommend picking it up I do have to say I did not read what well, I ha still haven't read actually Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren a lot of people say that these books are so so similar that they didn't like this one because they felt a certain way of, because love in other words again is just so so similar to this one and this one came out 
afterwards but I did really enjoy this book I will probably have to pick up love in other words now that I know it's similar but there is that one I did really enjoy it and I do love the tropes in this one and then the next two I have here are actually part of a series and I have it is a trilogy and I actually loved books one and three I did not really enjoy book two that much but anyway we have things we never got over by Lucy score and then we have things we left behind by Lucy score so first of all things we never got over by Lucy score I was so nervous to pick this book up it is a chunky one but I really, really ended up loving this book. This one is about Knox and Naomi. So Naomi ends up going to this small town when her sister called her and essentially said she needed her help. But anyway, Naomi ends up with her sister's daughter. And of course, Knox is there when, you know, Naomi finds out all of this that's going on. Her sister is not there. Her sister has been trouble all of her life. And that is where this book starts off. Again, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed the couple. I love the small town. I love getting introduced to all the characters. I feel like this is what had me pick up more romances this year. I Again, I really, really enjoyed this one. This one was a five-star read for me. And then I do have to say, I know a lot of people don't feel the same about this one. But with Things We Left Behind, I was looking forward to Sloane and Lucian's book for forever but a lot of people feel like this did not hit the mark as for what they were looking for in Sloan and Lucian's book I thought this was the best book by far this one hit the mark for me I adored it again I can't say enough good things about this but if you are hesitant to pick up the book because you've heard so many mixed reviews about it pick it up and see what you think again I really really love this one Sloan and Lucian are my favorite couple in this series truly 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 love this book so the next book I have here, I ended up rating it in the high four stars and I do contemplate bringing this up to a five star read all the time because I do think about this book very frequently. And that is The Flat Chair by Beth O'Leary. We have Tiffy and we have Leon. And what ends up happening is something ends up happening with Tiffy's boyfriend. She needs to move out and she needs to find a place of her own and kind of like a fresh start kind of thing. So she ends up looking for an apartment. There's an ad in the paper and Leon is looking for a person to share his flat with. So he works nights and she works during the day. So essentially they would not really cross paths because as soon as one would be coming in, the other would be leaving for work. And so she ends up doing the flat share and that is how things start. How they end up communicating is leaving sticky notes throughout the house. And I just think the way it developed was so cute. I love that it was angsty and like you never knew if they were gonna like run into each other. I love that, but they do end up meeting. And you know, obviously things kick off from there. It is a romance book and I just loved it. I do have to say I did love you know, reading before they met more than reading after they met. I don't know. There's just something about like, I couldn't wait for them to, you know, finally meet each other and the angstiness of them, like leaving notes and like, you know, not knowing who the person was and not having a, you know, face to who was saying things. I don't know. I love that about this book. But anyway, I always think about this book and I contemplate, you know, bringing it up to a five star all the time. So this was an amazing read for me. I absolutely love this book and I could see myself rereading it in the future. The next book I have here is actually by a very popular author and I started obviously reading this year. So I read two of her books this year and this was one of them and it was a new release for her and that is Emily Henry. So this is Happy Place. I love this book. What I loved about this book is the relationships of all of the friends so first of all this is about a it was a couple so these two were a couple they go on vacation with their friends and they don't want to say that they have split up because that would kind of ruin the vacation for them and their friends so they go pretending that they are still together and I love this book because I felt like it was so much more than just a romance book this was like a slice of life wholesome book that showed you friendships and how they evolve and just relationships and how they become so different as you get older and I felt like I could personally relate to this because I am I'm not 30 yet but I do have two kids and I feel like being this young with two kids has put me and my friends in like different spots in life you know what I mean our lives are just very different but that doesn't mean we can't be friends and you know still hang out and still enjoy life together and you know all that good stuff and it's just like so slice of life as to like even though you're in different parts of life and different stages it doesn't mean 
you know, that you can't be friends with people and that people won't still be there for you. And I thought it was so good. I thought it was so wholesome. I thought it was so sweet. And I just had a really good time reading it. I thought it was phenomenal. Again, I felt like there was just so much you could take from this book. And I absolutely love that about this. So I will continue to pick up her books as well. So there was that one. And then we have two more before I get into my top six. So the next one I have here is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. This is the first book I read by her. I still have yet to get to the dead romantics, but I will get to it. Anyway, this one is about a girl and her aunt ends up passing away and essentially she is left her aunt's apartment. Now her aunt had told her how magical this apartment was and how, you know, there were magical aspects to this apartment. But Clementine, who is the girl in this book, didn't necessarily know how like true her aunt was being because she never experienced it but one day Clementine comes home and her apartment it's just her apartment is seven years in the past and there is a man there because it is seven years in the past and you know she ends up you know going into this man in her apartment and being like all freaked out and you know she tells him to leave and there's this whole thing going on anyway the man and her end up forming a relationship and it is so wholesome it is like a slice of life book it is just it's a really cute romance if you haven't picked it up i definitely recommend trying it out i think ashley poston's writing is phenomenal i adored this book again and definitely highly recommend it now this next one <sighs> I definitely recommend looking up the trigger warnings for this one's going to stick with me and I rated this a high four star read as well and it I haven't heard many people talk about it but it is a very emotional read again and this one is Talking at Night by Claire Daverly. This book had such an impact on me that I actually went ahead and messaged the author and like told her how absolutely phenomenal this book was because while it is an emotional read it's like very heavy and the topics you can you can feel and see the characters struggling in this and I just feel like it's so real life I'll tell you about it I'll tell you about it so this one is about Will and Rosie and Will is Rosie's brother's friend so they end up meeting at I believe it is a bonfire one night they end up meeting and talking and you know they have a good time talking and then they don't see each other for a little bit Rosie's brother ends up bringing Will home to help him with math. I think it's math. And Will ends up getting snowed in at Rosie's house and ends up sleeping, I believe, downstairs. And Rosie comes down in the middle of the night to snack. And Will's awake and they, you know, sit at the kitchen table and talking again. Talking at night. So anyway, that is how their relationship, like, starts. And they, they just start talking and they have a good time talking with one another. And they like share things that they wouldn't normally share with anybody else and it just feels so natural and like the way Claire Daverly like does it you can feel how natural it is for them to talk and I love that about this book but this book tells you that tragedy strikes and let me tell you I was not expecting what happens and there's a plot twist in this book that like when it was happening I kind of could guess it but it was still like mind-blowing at the same time if that makes sense but anyway Will and Rosie both go through such a traumatic experience Rosie I can't even put into words how traumatic the experience is that she goes through and again it was not one that I saw coming and you just see Will and Rosie reconnecting through life like they will go their separate ways and then reconnect and then go their separate ways and reconnect and like every single time I feel like it's Rosie like making them disconnect from one another and then it's just it's hard the decision she has to make I feel like it's obvious to us as readers what she needs to do but as far as like real life situations and scenarios I feel like if you were in Rosie's situation you also have to take a step back and like look at life itself and she was also like a super people pleaser and that was and that was like to a fault and that was also something that held her back from like doing what she really wanted in life as you can see there's like just so much going on in this book and I feel like these characters just kept getting hit with like one thing after another after another and that's why it made it such an emotional read and I will put the reading vlog down below too that I read this in I compare this to Binding and Keeping 13 the trauma that they go through is so different but the emotions these books provoke 
are very similar in that you feel so connected to these characters and some of the characters will frustrate you like Rosie frustrates me like even thinking about it now the decision she made is it's just really frustrating but again you can see in real life how you know she was putting the pieces together and like why she made the decision she made and it's just it's a very emotional book and it will bring out I feel like emotions like Binding and Keeping 13 do if that makes sense like it's just an emotional read again the trauma is nowhere near similar the books are nowhere near similar the books Finding and Keeping 13 and this book are very character driven but again the trauma that the characters go through are very drastically different but it's just such an emotional read. So anyway those were those reads. Now I have my top six and I am first going to go through I have two graphic novels here in case you guys didn't know I am absolutely adoring graphic novels. So I have two five star reads as far as graphic novels go and if I'm being completely honest, I would say one outweighs the other just like a smidge more. So if you had to ask me which one I like better, I feel like I could tell you and I will. So I'll go with this one first. This one is The Princess and the Girl of Cheese. And I would say this is my second favorite graphic novel of the year. And I absolutely adored this. As you can see here, the illustrations are phenomenal. And like the fashion in this book, the what the characters wear is just absolutely stunning. And it was just such a good read. And when I say the amount of references to cheese in this book are absolutely phenomenal, but it is so well done at the same time. It was just so amazing. Anyway, we have Lady Camembert, who is our main character. Her father is ill and she cannot collect an inheritance because she is a woman. So in order to collect an inheritance, she would need to get married. And this is a sapphic romance. So obviously that does not happen. And I don't want to tell you what happens. I don't want to give anything away. But anyway, she ends up meeting Princess Brie and it's a sapphic romance. <laughs> I don't want to say too much though. I don't want to give anything away and I don't want to read the back of the book here. But again, Princess Brie. There's also Lady Gorgonzola. There's also, um, oh my gosh, Feta. And there, all the characters, all of the towns, everything just is like a cheese reference and I thought it was so well done again I can't say enough about that but anyway I had such a fun time in this book the fashion in this book is just absolutely phenomenal the illustrations are amazing again such an amazing read I had such a good time and can't say enough about this one now this one I have to say is my favorite graphic novel of the year and that is Unfamiliar by Haley Newsom. And I will do a little, this is volume one, by the way, volume one is my favorite. I do have volume two on my shelf, but I have to say I love volume one so, 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 so much. So let's do a quick little flip through. And it is just, it's stunning. The artwork is stunning. The story is absolutely amazing. I had a phenomenal time, but anyway, this one is about a kitchen witch named Planchet, and she is moving to a new home and when she gets to her new home it is haunted. She ends up meeting three friends so it's Planchet, the main character, then you have Pinion, we have Sun, and we have Babs and all four characters have like their own little things they are struggling with in life and I love this. I thought it was wholesome. I thought it was cute. I thought the adventures were amazing. It had me wanting to continue to read. The illustrations were phenomenal and I don't want to say too much because it doesn't tell you very very much on here other than you know Planchet you know going into a new home and it being haunted and I had so much fun so much fun reading this and I hope I believe there's a third volume coming out I hope there's a third volume coming out I absolutely adored this so much so that I picked up literally the second one the minute I finished this one so again my favorite graphic novel of the year so now we have our top four novels of the year and I'm excited to talk to you guys about these ones because these ones I can see myself picking up in the future and rereading not even just once like many times so this first one i have here is the house in the cerulean sea by tj clune and this one follows linus who is a caseworker for the department in charge of magical youth 
and you see Linus in his everyday life and you just like get this dreary feeling when you're like following his everyday life in the beginning and then you also see him visiting other magical youth and like overseeing how things are being run in houses and you know all that good stuff anyway Linus ends up getting sent to an island and on this island there is this house and they are like the most dangerous magical youth there is that a lot of people don't know about you know what's going on there so he ends up getting sent there but what i have to say is this is such a wholesome read and you fall in love with the children you fall in love with the stories going on it's just so wholesome i loved it i adored it i cannot wait for the sequel to come out it's called somewhere beyond the sea and that one is coming out in 2024 again another one i am super excited about but i feel like you just never stop thinking about these kids. Like I have not stopped thinking about these kids since I put this book down and I loved it. I loved it. So can't wait for the second one to come out. Then I have here, this one's going to be no surprise. This one is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Yes, I am one of the people that absolutely adored this book. This is one of the first books that I have to say, like as soon as I stopped reading this, I felt the need to pick it back up again. And I don't know if it was just the cliffhanger and like, the feeling I felt after the book that made me want to pick it up again, I don't know, but this was a five star read for me. I really enjoyed this book. I'm not going to say too much about it because I know so many people have heard what this book is about. So I don't want to take up too much time here. So we're going to move on from this one and we are going to go to these two books. Now, these two books, if you had to ask me what were your top two, top two books like all time books of the year. These are the two I would go to. So the one I'll start with is Shark Heart, A Love Story by Emily Hayback. And in this one, we have a couple, Lewis and Wren, and they are just newly married. And very shortly into their marriage, Lewis gets a diagnosis. It's a very rare disease. And in this disease, people transform into animals. And so he is slowly transforming into a great white shark. And I know that sounds so weird, but it just, this story just works. It really just works. So anyway, you see the couple kind of like navigating this illness and navigating, you know, how to deal with the end of his human life and how that's going to work. And it's so hard to put into words. This book just conveys family and loss and love and it just conveys it all so well. And I do have to say that Lewis and Ren are two people who are quite opposite of each other. So you see Ren and her character is described as like very organized, loves working with numbers and like just has everything like down to a T. And then you have Lewis who loves like just arts and you know, he's messy and it shows you like his drawings are just like random places all over the house and it just and their relationship just works and I like how the author included that you know like two people who are different that their lives just they just work together and I really really enjoyed that I really enjoyed also how Ren is conveyed as this organized person who has a plan for everything but when this illness strikes and when it takes over Lewis and like as he continues to transform there are times where Ren is just like not knowing what to do and in certain situations like she's debating on what to do and you would think she would have a plan because she is this organized person but when like tragedy strikes and like when things happen that are just you know not what you're expecting and you know traumatic and you, you sometimes you just you don't know what to do and there is no great plan and how it affects a person is just so different and i love how the author just kind of showed you even though you have this organized person who has all these plans and like has you know a way of doing things and you know has everything figured out doesn't have everything figured out when it comes to what's going on in this situation there are things that happen that you just can't possibly think of what to do in the scenario and like she seems out of character, but it is also a traumatic situation, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. But also you get a backstory on another character in here, which is Ren's mother, who had been through traumatic things herself as well. And you can see just how much heartbreak Ren has gone through and just like feel for the character. I don't know. I 
I just felt so bad for Ren. Again, this is a very emotional story and I definitely highly, highly, highly recommend picking this one up if you have not read it. It is a debut novel by Emily Haybeck and it is just so amazing and it was a new release this year. Definitely pick it up if you have not yet. Last book we have here, this one is probably no surprise to people that have been around a while. And actually I'm surprised I don't have any of her other books on here because she's just an author I can go to. She's a go-to author that I can pick up her books and they will always be a four star read and above. I love her writing. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't guessed already, that is Kristen Hanna and this book is The Nightingale. Now I know I said before that I don't necessarily tear up at books very often. This book had me sobbing, sobbing. These two are top two reads, but as far as like emotionally provoking, they're both emotionally provoking, but this book had me sobbing. I adore this book. This one is about two sisters during World War II and their stories are very different. So one sister has a husband and a child and the other sister is younger and she was living with her father and the way the story goes is just heartbreaking. There are parts of this book where like, I know I said I was sobbing in the end, but there were parts where I was even crying in the middle of this book. And like, I feel like being pregnant and also reading this with, especially with one scene that happens in here, I was bound to cry, but like, I, I can't wait to read this book again. I know I will reread this book again. Her writing, like I said, the character development, I felt like I was there and I felt like I could feel what these characters were feeling. And I don't often feel that in books. I do feel it in books, but like the way in which she does it, it's just phenomenal. I And like the settings and you can just picture everything in her books and you can picture the people you can picture the characters the setting what's going on and like there was one point where it was like a very graphic scene as far as like a war scene goes and like the one sister is trying to make her way to the other one and there is this attack that happens and like you can feel like you're there like you can hear it you can see it you can it's just crazy how it feels and I absolutely love that about her writing but this book was, it's a tearjerker. If you are looking for an emotional read, or if you are looking for one that's really going to hit and hit hard, pick it up. I, again, I really adored this book. I love the characters and the ending. It, it It's phenomenal. It is really phenomenal. I don't want to say too much about it because I don't want to give too much away. But yes, phenomenal book very very emotional read so those were my top 23 reads of 2023 but i want to know what were your top reads of 2023 leave them down below i want to know i maybe i will pick them up maybe in 2024 i will pick up some of your favorite reads of 2023 and see how it goes. Maybe I'll do a little reading vlog. I don't know. Maybe that would be fun. But anyway, I want to know what your top reads were. I love seeing what people have read, are reading, what your favorites were. I, I love all that stuff, as you guys know. But anyway, thanks guys for sticking with me for this video. I know it was a longer one. If you liked it, make sure to give it that thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos, make sure to stick around, hit that subscribe button. I would absolutely love to have you. But again, guys, thanks for sticking around. As always, I appreciate each and every single one of you, and I will see you guys soon.